it's important for people to understand medical science to know that natural human immunity of populations that is sometimes called herd immunity. It's very important that that develops. That's how viruses are eradicated. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and provide new guards for their future security. People don't really talk that way, you know? I know, but they think that way. Travis Wayne Goodsell, Joseph Smith knew about coronavirus and knew when the date for the end of the world would be. We'll start with a discourse he gave on July 19, 1840. It was reported by Martha Jane Knowlton Corre. I'm not sure Corre B. Uh, this is from the Joseph Smith papers. Not sure why they got that Corey B thing. <clears throat> anyway, we'll go to the highlights. Uh, he's talking about his uh, parable that he gives in what's now section 101. I'll go to that after this. <coughs> we shall. Build the Zion of the Lord in peace, until the servants of that Lord shall begin to lay the foundation of a great and high watchtower. And then shall they begin to say within themselves, What need hath my Lord of this tower, seeing this is a time of peace, and etc. Then the enemy shall come as a thief in the night, and scatter the servants abroad. Then the seed of these twelve olive trees are scattered abroad. They will wake up the nations of the whole earth. Even uh, this nation will be on the very verge of crumbling to pieces and tumbling to the ground. And when the Constitution is upon the brink of ruin, this people will be the staff upon which the nation shall lean. And they shall bear away the Constitution away from the verge of destruction. Then shall the Lord go tell all my servants who are the strength of my house, middle aged, and, uh, and come to the Lord of my vineyard and fight the battle of the Lord. Uh, we finished with what needs to be read on this part. Yeah, it looks like it. Because there's some other fun stuff in this one, too. But. Yeah. Yeah. The mountain of Zion and Jerusalem. Mountain cities of Zion and Jerusalem comes from this. New Jerusalem. Alrighty. So, to Doctrine and Covenants, we'll come back to 45, so let's go to section 101, to his parable, parable of the nobleman and the olive trees, starting in verse 43. <coughs> okay, Doctrine and Covenants, section 101, verse 43. And now I will show unto you a parable, that you may know my will concerning the redemption of Zion. Let's center this. 
A certain nobleman had a spot of land, very choice, and he said unto his servants, Go ye unto my vineyard, even upon this very choice piece of land, and plant twelve olive trees, and set watchmen round about them, and build a tower, that one may overlook the land round about, to be a watchman upon the tower, that mine olive trees may not be broken down, when the enemy shall come to spoil, and take upon themselves the fruit of my vineyard. Now the servants of the nobleman went and did as their lord commanded them, and planted the olive trees, and built a hedge round about, and set watchmen, and began to build a tower. Uh, Mormons, I hope you understand the symbols here, and how it's been fulfilled. Just pay attention. And while they were yet laying the foundation thereof, they began to say among themselves, And what need have hath my lord of this tower? And consulting for a long time, saying among themselves, What need hath my lord of this tower, seeing this is a time of peace? Might not this money be given to the exchangers? There's a talk in 1839 where Joseph is talking to the twelve and calls one certain exalted person in that group Judas. For there is no need of these things. And while they were a, at variance one with another, they became very slothful, and they hearkened not unto the commandments of their Lord. And the enemy came by night, and broke down the hedge, and the servants of the nobleman arose, and were affrighted, and fled. And the enemy destroyed their works, and broke down the olive trees. Now behold, the nobleman of the Lord of the vineyard came upon his servants, and said unto them, Why? <laughs> what is the cause of this great evil? Ought ye not to have done as I commanded you? And after ye had planted the vineyard, and built the hedge round about, and set watchmen upon the walls thereof, built the tower also, and set a watchman upon the tower, and watched for my vineyard, and not have fallen asleep? Another comparison to the New Testament. Lest the enemy should come upon you? And behold, the watchman upon the tower would have seen the enemy while he was yet afar off. And then ye could have made ready and kept the enemy from breaking down the hedge thereof and saved my vineyard from the hands of the destroyer. Do you understand, Mormons? We're not done yet. And the Lord of the vineyard said unto my, uh, one of his servants, Go and gather together the residue of my servants and take all the strength of mine house, which are my warriors, my young men, and they that are of middle aged, also among all my servants, who are the strength of mine house, save those only whom I have appointed to tarry. And go ye straightway unto the land of my vineyard, and redeem my vineyard, for it is mine. I have bought it with money. Therefore, get ye straightway unto my land, break down the walls of mine enemies, throw down their tower, and scatter their watchmen. And inasmuch as they gather against you, avenge me of mine enemies, that by and by I may come with the residue of mine house, and possess the land. And the servant said unto his Lord, What shall these things be? And he said unto his servant, When I will Go ye straightway, and do all these things whatsoever I have commanded you. And this shall be my seal and blessing unto you, a faithful and wise steward in the midst of mine house, a ruler in my kingdom. And a servant went straightway, and did all things whatsoever his Lord commanded him. And after many days all these all things were fulfilled. Alrighty. Looks like that is the end of the parable. So let's go back to 45. Okay, in 45 it's a retelling of Matthew. But there's 
some differences from the Joseph Smith revision of Matthew. Does he add something? And so, yeah, he's talking about, and in that generation shall the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there, in verse 31 of section 45, and there shall be men standing in that generation that shall not pass until they shall see an overflowing scourge. For a desolating sickness shall cover the land. And then he goes on, uh, talking about the fig tree, and see all these things, the hour is nigh, he that feareth for the great day of the Lord to come, even for the signs of the coming of the Son of Man. And you shall see signs and wonders, for they shall be shown forth in the heavens above. Two, the sun shall be darkened, the moon turned to blood, and stars fall from heaven. Right. And so yes, then he talks about the Jews, and it's not the Jews, Mormons. So again, let's go to section 103. Think about the parable. Think about section 45 with the desolating scourge. <clears throat> Nevertheless, in verse 14, if they pollute their inheritances, just like the servants of the vineyard in the parable, they shall be thrown down, for I will not spare them if they pollute their inheritances. This is the last days, Mormons, here it comes. Behold, I say unto you, the redemption of Zion must needs come by power. Therefore I will raise up unto my people a man who shall lead them like as Moses led the children of Israel. So we go to section 85. Just in case you're confused as to what's happening with the church in the latter days. And it shall come to pass, in verse 7, that I, the Lord God, will send one mighty and strong, holding the scepter of power in his hand, clothed with light furry covering, whose mouth shall utter words, eternal words, whose bowels shall be a fountain of truth, to set in order the house of God. The temple needs to be set in order. Yeah, the servants are going to be wicked, as in the parable as in the need for the redemption of Zion because the church will have polluted their inheritances. The leaders of the church will have failed the Mormons during a time of coronavirus, a desolating scourge, a sickness that shall cover the land. Alrighty. Um, so, uh, let's give you more. Let's just throw this all at you, all at once here. If this has not been enough to convince you. <coughs> For they have strayed from mine ordinances, and have broken mine everlasting covenant. In verse 15 of section 1. Who is this, Mormons? Who makes everlasting covenants? Who makes ordinances to follow ordinances? Yeah, only Mormons. He's talking about Mormons. And again, the servants are the leaders of the church all the way up to the tippy top. So Mormons have strayed from mine ordinances. Mormons have broken mine everlasting covenant. Mormons seek not the Lord to establish his righteousness, but every Mormon walketh in his own way after the image of his own God, whose image is in the likeness of the world, and whose substance is that of an idol, and which waxeth old, and shall perish in Babylon. Babylon? Even Babylon the Great, which shall fall? 
did the church service missionaries for the 1981 version of the triple combination forget to decode this Babylon? If you're unfamiliar that the Abductor and Covenants was de encoded and needed to be decoded for the 1981 version, you're, you're a youngin'. I was the first generation of seminary students who had the new Doctrine and Covenants decoded, but not completely decoded. So, if it's Mormons, thus religion, because Babylon was a theocracy, both religion and government. America is no longer a religion and government rolled up into one theocracy. Government is separated. So when it's talking about government Babylon, it's America. When it's talking about religion Babylon, guess who, Mormons? And guess what it says? Even the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Great, which shall fall. From Joseph Smith. And if you want more proof, wherefore I, the Lord, knowing the calamity which shall come upon the inhabitants of the earth, called upon my servant Joseph Smith, Jr. We're not done yet. We are not done. Pawn my house. Begin. Yep. Section one twelve of the Doctrine and Covenants. Well, let's see. I guess we can start in twenty three. Verily, verily, I say unto you, darkness covereth the earth, and gross darkness the minds of the people, and all flesh have become corrupt before my face. Behold, vengeance cometh speedily upon the inhabitants of the earth, a day of wrath, a day of burning, a day of desolation, a weep of weeping, of mourning, of lamentation. And as the whirlwind, it shall come upon all the face of the earth, saith the Lord, and upon my house shall it begin, and from my house shall it go forth, saith the Lord. First among those of you, among you, saith the Lord, who have professed to know my name, and have not known me, and have blasphemed against me, in the midst of my house, saith the Lord. Who is he talking to, Mormons? Give you a hint, the house is the temple. And we've already gone over that in section one. It's you, Mormons. So yes, this is a video where I'm pissing off Mormons all over the place. And we're not done, because here's the date. Right in the very beginning of the Book of Mormon. For it came to pass in the commencement of the first year of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah. Who put Zedekiah on the throne of Judah? In Jerusalem. Babylon. Babylon put Zedekiah. They conquered Judah and put Zedekiah on the throne as a puppet king. And in the first year of this puppet king comes a sign in the heavens. And being thus overcome with the spirit, he, Lehi, was carried away in a vision, even that he saw the heavens opened. So there you go, a sign in the heavens. And he thought he saw God sitting upon his throne. 
surrounded with numerous concourses of angels in the attitude of singing and praising their God. This is a sign in the heavens. It is not people without space helmets floating around in space being able to breathe. It's a sign. And it came to pass that he saw one descending out of the midst of heaven, and he beheld that his luster was above that of the noonday sun. Again, we're still talking about a sign in the heavens. And he also saw twelve others following him, and their brightness did exceed that of the stars of the firmament. Again, signs of the heaven. <clears throat> in the first year of the reign of King Zedekiah, Nephi also talks about a, in his dream that he has of his fathers about the tree of life he finds out about this prophet named John who's going to write about the last days so let's go into Revelation and see if John did indeed talk about the last days and maybe give us something very similar to that sign that Lehi had in, ver in chapter 12 verse 1 and there appeared a great wonder in heaven Joseph Smith changes this to sign and then he adds in the likeness of things on the earth a woman clothed with the Sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered and then verse 5 is moved to verse 3 and she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with an iron, rod of iron and her child was caught up to God and to his throne where did John get this Is it possibly Isaiah yes and it's also in the Book of Mormon Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi 17, it shows at the top in the chapter heading by Bruce R. McGungy. So, hear now, O house of David, is it a small thing for ye to weary men, but ye, will ye weary my God also? Therefore, in verse 14, the Lord himself shall give you a sign, not a birth, a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, not Jesus Christ. Son Amen, if you're Mormon. El is God, so the God Amen, Son God of the Egyptians. And Joseph Smith called him Son Amen, because he knew that Father Amen was Son Amen's Heavenly Father. Alrighty. I think that's it. Oh, yeah. The date. Because this is a sign in the heavens, we can use astronomy, a hard science, to establish the date. The more uh, celestial bodies you add to the sign, the more rare it becomes, the more precise of a date you have. John's Revelation 12 was very precise, gave us an exact date. The Book of Mormon, by adding God sitting upon his throne as part of the sign in the heaven, confirmed the date of John's. 23rd September 2017. The first year of Trump's presidency. If you're unfamiliar with the GOP Senate Intelligence Committee, not too long ago they came out with report number five, completing their investigation into the 2016 election and confirmed Putin put Trump on the presidency, on the throne of America. And now we have the coronavirus, which Moses had to deal with during Pharaoh during his confrontation with Pharaoh. Let my people go. No. Firstborn of Egypt dies from the coronavirus. Pharaoh then says, go. Do 
I need more explanations? Who wants to be Knights Templar and who wants to be Illuminati? I'll give you a hint, the Illuminati is of the devil. Their sign is Lucifer's sign. Guess where Lucifer's sign is? Brigham Young had it put on the Nauvoo Temple after the murder of Joseph and Hiram Smith. Dedicated on 1st of May, the anniversary of the Illuminati. Then, had it put on the Logan and Salt Lake Temples. On the Salt Lake Temple is the center of Mormonism, Mormon Vatican. It is on the keystone of the arch of the door of the temple, where all of us get our wedding pictures taken. On the Seagull Gate at State Street and Temple Square, the foundation stone of the keystone of the Seagull Gate, with the seagull having conquered the beehive, you have the inverted pentagram yet again, the sign of Lucifer, pointing to the state capitol building. They control the government of Utah. Just like when the streets of DC were developed and made, they form a inverted pentagram, an inverted pentagram pointing at the White House with the Scottish Rites Lodge between the horns of the inverted pentagram, the goat beast. Do I need to keep going? Because we can talk about Canon Dagua and Heber C. Kimball, Joseph Smith Sr. and William Morgan, anti-Mason. William Morgan was a York Mason who came to Canandaigua Lodge, his fellow York brethren, where Joseph Smith Sr. was the Master Mason in charge of that lodge. He told him of the conspiracy of the Illuminati to infiltrate the Scottish Rites of America and then to infiltrate the American government and overthrow America and return to a monarchy. Heber C. Kimball's Wikipedia page under Masonry reveals that Heber C. Kimball is Scottish Rites, found out about Joseph Smith Sr., claiming that he was approved for a York Rite seventh level after becoming a master mason himself he had to go somewhere else to become a York right seventh level when he was Scottish rights huh yeah I'm sure that's fully appropriate and that's how they wanted things done back then do you understand why the Warsaw Lodge was upset that Joseph Smith was made a master mason in just two days it took Joseph Smith senior 18 years to become a master mason so yes I'm sure Heber C. Kimball's a good man he wouldn't lie his family wouldn't lie either to cover it up if that's what they're doing instead he found out that Joseph Smith Sr. was responsible for the anti-Mason movement that burned down all of the temples, that chased them into hiding, where they vowed revenge to seek revenge on all those responsible and rise up in the latter days. the first year of the reign of the puppet president when the son of the, the sign of the son of man came and would cause a desolating sickness to cover the land thinking that they could mock this future messiah as a hoax and a fraud 
and destroy America with herd immunity, with other destructions, so that they can rise up with a monarchy from the ashes. Albert Pike's letter to Giuseppe Mazzini confirms the connection of the Illuminati to the Scottish Rites Masons and to the doctrine of Lucifer. I can go on, but we're at 30 minutes.